you have to. Nice. Thank you, Kevin. I'll call this workshop to get uh, to order. Uh, Council, you have uh, at your places a copy of the uh, proposed agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, on the agenda, you also have some listed uh, consent items, and at this time, I'd entertain a motion to adopt. And the minutes, Mayor. And we have minutes, I'm sorry, from two different meetings, one uh, both on the 22nd of March, a regular workshop and a regular meeting. So if I could get that one motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing not all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Um, I know on the consent items we have uh, we have this item here with the Jacksonville Area Soccer Association lease, and we have some representatives here tonight. But uh, fortunately, uh, they don't have any additional information to add as far as that's concerned. But uh, that has been approved. The lease. Yes. Written. Just a quick comment. Over the last six months, we've been very fortunate to work with Jamie and with Bob on behalf of JAZA. We have brought two workshops to City Council relative to the new lease. Uh, it is a new lease. It's not a continuation of the previous lease. Uh, Susan and Michael and other members of the staff have, have, have had significant contributions to the lease. We believe it's in the citizens and in the soccer association's best interest to continue this, and we appreciate the council this evening authorizing this new lease. <coughs> Bob, any comments you or Jamie? Yes. Yes. We just thank, thank the community for the support for able to keep the area open and everything, providing a service to our community. Thanks for what y'all do for the kids and yep. make that opportunity for them. Yeah. And the new president mayor is here. Bob may want to introduce him for the council's benefit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is Sam Duran. He's going to be the new president. Uh, we're going to switch positions. I'm going to be the VP of Classic, and uh, Sam stepped up to be the president. Okay, well, congratulations to hey, both of you. Sounds like uh, <laughs> different duties, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Appreciate y'all. Okay. <coughs> All right, so uh, we're going to move right on to our, our workshop topic for tonight, and that's the 2016 2017 budget review. And uh, Dr. Woodruff, I'll turn it over to you at this time to begin the. Mayor, members of council, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to begin the budget process. Uh, you have the paper copy of the budget. You also have the electronic copy of the budget. So you're welcome to uh, follow along in either format that you would like. As we begin the budget this evening, the capital improvement program, which is this document, was provided to you uh, last month. You have had an opportunity to look at that, and over the next several weeks, we will walk through the operating budgets of the various departments and various funds. As is shown on the screen, by law, you are required to adopt a budget by June 30th, 2016. It has been your practice to hold a series of workshops during the month of April and May as needed, and in a moment, you're going to see the schedule which we propose for this year's budget operation. Now you're going to see the schedule that we propose for the budget operation. You can see the opening workshop, of course, is tonight, and then each Tuesday through the month of April, we're asking for a budget workshop. We do want to have, although we're required to have it, we also want to have a public hearing for input on the budget. The city clerk has posted the budget as required by law. Carmen, that has been posted where? Um, be advertised in the newspaper tomorrow in a box ad, and it'll be uh, again advertised the following week. And for persons who want to actually review the budget, where can they see it? They can see it online they, at our website. They can see it at the local library and also in my office. Okay, that's good. Uh, the public hearing is for input. It is not a hearing where you're going to be asked to take any action. We want anyone who feels that they would like to see something added or deleted or input on the budget to feel free to come to your regular city council meeting on April the 19th. We do propose the possibility of being in a position to adopt the budget on May 3rd. As you'll see in a moment, because we're not asking for any tax increases or fee increases this year, we believe that you may be in a position to potentially adopt it May 3rd. If not, you can adopt it at any additional time as long as it is adopted before June 30th of this year. 
in the budget message which is at the beginning of the budget book there are a couple of comments that I would like to to read first of all this budget is submitted on behalf of every department and every city employee this is technically the manager's budget but the reality is this is the budget that provides the necessary funds to continue all the services that you as a mayor and council have set the standards for us to to operate and provide to the citizens. Part of the budget message says the following. As we present this budget for your consideration, the city management team can confirm that the city of Jacksonville is in sound financial condition. While the city does face financial challenges, these can be managed and the services of the city government can continue in the quality fashion the mayor and council have directed. The draft FY17 budget provides the revenues necessary to continue the delivery of quality services to the citizens of our community relative to water and sewer, the general fund, stormwater, sanitation collection, and miscellaneous accounts. The draft budget does not require an increase in the city's current tax rate of 64.2 cents, nor an increase in the water and sewer fees the stormwater fees, nor in commercial or residential garbage collection fees. Even so, there are challenges that we're going to face, and we'll be discussing them in the coming weeks. We have challenges relative to the health insurance fund and how we're going to cover the ever-increasing cost of that benefit that you provide to your employees. We have continued expenses for the new Center for Public Safety relative to IT accounts. <clears throat> We always have to watch for the fund balance of the general fund so we don't draw it down too far. We all know that the tax base of this city is growing, but it is growing at a much slower pace. And we have to begin to take steps to recognize that that tax base, that tax base increase is going to continue to grow, but at a slow pace. This year we're talking about new Fair Labor Standard Act charges. That, that determine who is classified as an exempt employee versus non-exempt, basically meaning hourly versus salary. We have to look at the issue of employee compensation, the funding of major equipment, water and sewer debt and bond issues that we'll be issuing later this year. We have to look at the way we're going to fund matching grants for some of our recreation projects. And then, of course, we'll be talking about reorganization. In the capital improvement program, we are very pleased that you have a number of activities that will move the city forward. One that is going to be difficult in your discussions will be where do we go on the Sturgeon City Environmental Building? And we'll be spending more time discussing options on that. We're looking at the completion of the Lejeune Greenway and Trail, and we're very pleased to tell you that the contractor is now making significant progress on cutting out all of the path so that from basically the bicycle bridge there on 24 all the way back down to the Memorial Gardens, that project should be finished within the next several months. We're looking at a welcome center at Jacksonville Landing, redevelopment to begin at Jackson at the uh, Northeast Creek Park. That's going to be a redevelopment effort over at least three years, and you're looking at expending well in excess of a million dollars to improve that park. Continued redevelopment of the downtown area, the city's annual paving program, sidewalk program, and of course the regional lift station, which is one we call Parkwood. We have a lot of challenges, but the good news is that we are able to face those challenges at least for one more year on a very sound financial basis. We have talked about the budget schedule. Tonight we'd like to give the overview, revenue forecast, the organization of the budget, talk very briefly about department issues, and then show you the number of proposed personnel for the coming year. If we have time this evening and you feel comfortable beginning this, we would actually begin to go through some of the department budgets, such as the mayor and council. That will probably take at least an hour in itself. <laughs> And then the discussion of elections, obviously that will balance the timesheet because we don't have an election next year, so we don't have to budget money for it. But we do hope to go through some of these budgets tonight. 
April 12th and 19th, we'll continue with finance, development services, public safety, recreation, and so forth. And then on the 19th, we'll really focus on those things having, with, having to do with your utility services. Again, potential adoption on the 3rd, or we can have additional workshops and adoption as needed. When it comes to the revenue forecast, this is an area that Gail does not let me add in public, nor does she let me talk about revenue in public. So I'm going to turn this over to the finance director, who will give you a quick overview of where we think our revenues are for the coming year. Gail? As you can see, these are just the major sources of revenue to fund our operations. Um, property tax, we budgeted 22.8 in 16. We're budgeting 23.2 in 17. And that's based on figures we got from the property tax office from the county. Um, sales tax, we're projecting a small increase. Um, the solid waste fees, we're looking at a very small increase there due to adding more customers. There's no increase in the fee. Um, and the transfer in there from the general fund still offsets the expenses. Um, Stormwater fees, we're looking at a very small increase, and uh, water and sewer fees, we're not looking at any kind of increase in the revenue there. Now, the actual details, if you want more details, is shown on page 10 of your, of your budget document. Please. And then this just gives you the total for each fund. The general fund actually is down a little bit in total budget for FY17. The same with the water sewer fund. Um, storm water is down just a little bit and solid waste is up just a little bit in total. You want to talk about this one too? You can. You're doing a great <laughs> job, so keep rolling. Our tax rate in FY16 was 64.2 cents and that is going to remain unchanged. We have four cents that we set aside for council initiatives. The Center for Public Safety, we raised that last year to the $5, five cents, 5.15 cents that it takes to cover the debt service. So that leaves 55 cents to run the general government operations. In department issues, we have agreed over the last uh, six budgets that we've worked together on that there's certain things that uh, will be put into the budget, certain things will come to you. The departments are required to present a base budget and areas where they want any significant increases, they have to justify them. They don't automatically go into the base budget. This year we had 12 requests. If you think back on other years, there have been years when we've had uh, two dozen, three dozen requests. The city budget and the city department heads recognize that we are into an area where we're going to have to do as much as possible with our current revenues. I'm very pleased to tell you that of the requests turned in this year, there were only 12. That speaks to what I call the honest budgeting that your department heads submit. Two of those have been placed in the operating budget, and they were incidental things. So let me give you an example. In, meter, in metering, they wanted to have a new, basically handheld meter reader that they could take out in the field. They have two. They wanted to have a backup so that when one of the two that they use on a daily basis malfunctions, that they would have this there so they could stay on schedule for reading. A relatively inexpensive, that was put in the budget. There are eight that were requested that are, non that are not recommended. Those include additional personnel in a number of areas, and as you go through those department budgets, you will be able to either confirm or reverse the recommendation of the manager. You will certainly never hurt my feelings by reversing those decisions. But in reversing those, you will have to find the revenues or realize that the fund balance will have to come up with the revenues to address those additional needs. There are two that I would also like to recommend to you, and we will be discussing those as we get to the individual departments. But altogether, 12 requests, two in the budget, two recommended, eight not recommended. Each year, we also 
organize the city budget with specific authorized positions. If you'll notice FY16, the current budget is 555 employees. The FY17 has one additional employee. That additional employee is actually in the police department, and that is the grant that you approve relative to, did they call it a psychological, but Ron, do you remember what the title was? No. But it was, um, it was a person to help in uh, trauma situations. So there has been a little bit of shifting in some of the individual department budgets, and you will see those later. But total budgets requested at this time will be 556 for the year. Did they fill that position yet? On the, it was counselor. Okay. Counselor. counselor. That was the title. Civilian yes. Police Crisis Counselor. I'm sorry. Civilian police crisis council. Okay. Yes, and, and they did fill that person. Yes. Expenditures, as Gail has uh, said, are basically uh, the same as last year. In some areas, a little lower. If you'll notice in water sewer, the primary reason why that's down about $4 million <coughs> is because of capital projects or ongoing maintenance projects that didn't qualify as capital projects. But you can see across the board, it is uh, generally the same budget as you had this past year. On capital improvements, though, it did go up significantly. And that is because you have the very large water and sewer, or rather sewer project, which is the Parkwood lift station. What are our budget assumptions? No tax increase. No sales tax distribution change. The tax rate would stay where it is at 64.2. The water and sewer rates will stay where they are. Solid waste fees, no change. Stormwater fees, no change. General fund balance, roughly $1.6 million. You'll recall over the years that we balance our budget using our savings account. Traditionally, we have used as high as three or four million. Last year, I believe we used about uh, 2.2 million with charges that you have assisted in residential collection over the years. We've been able to work to reduce the use of fund balance. The budget as presented to you tonight would use a little over 1.6 million of your fund balance. <coughs> You'll also recall that as you look at your audited numbers each year, that we are usually able to keep from spending all of the fund balance that we have projected. That's because of underspending in some of the budgeted items. Another budget assumption that we have is health insurance. We've been very fortunate that the last premium increase that was passed on to city employees was 2010. That's six budgets ago. What we know is that two years ago, we needed a premium increase, but we also know that during the good years of three and four and five years ago, we were able to build a reserve. Rather than pass on those premium increases to the employees, what we did was to go into that fund balance, which was the health insurance fund balance, and we picked up the void by spending our savings account. We've done that for the last two years. So instead of passing on a 6 or 7% increase each of the last two years, we spent our savings account. That savings account now is down to the point where we cannot do that any longer. So we are looking at cost increases and plan changes. For every plan, the premium will go up $20 per employee per pay period. 26 pay periods, that's $520. Did I get that math correct? I told them before we met. <laughs> <laughs> we, we thought so, yeah. Uh, while that's a large increase, we would remind everybody that it has been many years since we passed that increase along. The other thing is the city's contribution to the health plan will also go up $100,000 because the city, as the employer, covers a lot of the cost for the employee. There's good news, though, 
You will recall that a year or so ago, we reorganized how we were handling our situations on workers' compensation. Because we are stressing wellness, we're stressing safety, we are doing a very good job of settling claims, managing those claims, our premiums for next year's worker compensation will actually be reduced by a little over $100,000. So we're actually able and fortunate we're able to simply shift that 100000 from the workers' comp account over to the health account. So that was good news. There are also going to be plan changes. For example, we know over the last several years that our efforts to try to get people to use generic drugs has not been as successful as it should be. We also know our efforts to try to encourage employees not to use the emergency room unless it's truly an emergency, that those have not been as successful. So we're making plan changes that will incentivize and penalize. It's the carrot and the stick. So for example, the more you can use generic, the less we want that generic to cost. But when there is a generic and you choose not to use the generic, then the cost to you is going to be greater. We're going to be providing educational material to the employees, possibly something as simple as a card, so that when you go to the doctor, you don't have to, you don't have to understand insurance. All you have to say is, you know, doctor, when you get ready to do the prescription, here's what my employer says and let him read it. And what it's going to say is the city health plan says if a generic drug is available, you must prescribe it. You know, so we, we are really going to try to uh, get better control of our health plan. Our overall expenses with health claims as far as illnesses did not go up this year. What went through the roof were our prescription drug charges. The use of generics, if you pardon the expression, tanked. The use of non-generic drugs, which are in many cases extremely expensive, shot through the roof. Our health plan is also, as you look at one of the decision packages, is going to be talking about how we can do more coaching to encourage employees to live a wellness life and how we can help employees understand the medical issues that they're facing. I mean, you know, in the old days, you had a headache. Today, there could be a thousand reasons for having a headache, and they're all expensive. So we need some professional assistance, and that's one of the decision packages we'll be talking with you about. Fuel. While we all are pleased every time we go to the pump that it's not costing us $2, we're in the budget, we're keeping these budget numbers at the same level we've had for the last two years. We've discussed this with you before. We hope that that will build a reserve at the end. But what we do know is this, there will come a time this year, next year, the following budget, when the prices are going to go back up. And rather than be in the valley and enjoy the sunshine, we need to realize that the mountain's going to come back. And we need to have that reserve there so that when gas and diesel are back up over 3 or $4, we don't have to suddenly find twice as much money. We have planned for that rainy day. Let me ask you a quick question before you move to the next item. The, uh, based on those prices there, what is our annual fuel cost? We're fortunate we have the expert in the house tonight to answer that question. Ed, would you come up to join the mayor next to him? You look very good sitting as the mayor pro tem tonight. <laughs> uh, right now, for unleaded, the average, we're, we're spending just below $2 a gallon. That's what our average. Uh, we use about 14,000 gallons a month. So we're probably 200 and I don't have it. But somewhere around two hundred thousand dollars a year. Three hundred. Three hundred. 
See, so, Gail doesn't let Ed or me do math in public. <laughs> I, I need a I need a pencil on the computer. <laughs> okay. at, but, that, uh, at that price. No, no at, at the price we're at the price we're currently paying. But what's budgeted is significantly more than that. And so that money will just, it won't be used. It'll just roll back into the general fund or back into the fund I'm, balance. I'm just curious what the differential is between the well, dollar. But, yeah. Dollar between dollar. what we're budgeting versus what we're actually paying is somewhere around a dollar twenty, a dollar thirty, depending on how much we're paying. That's 14,000 yeah. gallons times 20. 14,000 plus Come on, Randy. Twelve by twelve is one forty-four. Yeah, about hundred fifty-six thousand. So, hundred seventy-five thousand. Mr. Matthew, hundred seventy-five thousand. Sixty-one two two hundred. Right, and right now the un the unleaded and diesel are really close together. It used to be a twenty cent gap between the two, but now the cost is within a couple cents of each other. So what happened when diesel was cheaper? I remember when everybody wanted to get mm -hmm. a diesel because it was cheaper than gas. Now, mm -hmm. now look at sulfur. They, were, yeah. they lowered the sulfur standard in diesel gasoline, which then added increased the cost. The other thing I would remind you while we're talking about fuel, you authorized us to, to buy a new container, 10,000-gallon container. That has significantly changed our transport cost. We now have it operational. We sent a picture to you with landscaping around it the other day. And uh, Ed, do you want to make any comments about how that's benefited us? Yes, sir. What we used to have to do before is with only a five-gallon diesel tank, we had to watch it, and we'd have to order fuel every three or four days. But it one depended on the other. To take a tanker load, it's 8,000 gallons. We knew we needed diesel, but did we need enough unleaded to take up that whole 8,000 gallons? Now the way we do it is we just call, they send 8,000 gallons of unleaded and the second truck rolls in right behind it with 8,000 gallons of diesel. We order fuel every two weeks and it's and that what it allows us, especially uh, water supply lines maintenance, they, they fill up their uh, tanks for all their emergency generators now. It, at our facility, which doesn't cause me a headache before if they would do that and they would use an extra three or 400 gallons in one day, that would really put us in the bind. But with that bigger tank, it has worked out really are we, well. Are we saying we're saving money uh, buying in, in a bulk? Oh, yes, sir. And, and the two departments that I just mentioned, they were paying $30 drop fee. So not only did they have to pay for the fuel, but $30 times per site per site times whatever, 10, 20 sites that they're filling that particular day. So for the city, it's a significant uh, savings with that larger tank. I believe that we calculated that within a two year period, you would pay for the cost of the tank just in the savings. Yes, sir. And then it, if we did run short, we always had to buy a short load from, we usually use great gas, but you're paying pump prices instead of a cheaper price and we'd have to do that every four or five months when we, we couldn't take enough unleaded to match it so so we won't have to do that never we will never have to do that again so it works out really well thanks Ed. appreciate it yes sir sounds like a yes sir good deal also the budget assumption as we said before uh we are adding one on the full-time basis you'll also notice that we reduced two on the part-time basis one of the things that we're going to be studying as part of the three E's this year is temporary employees. We are very fortunate that you allow us to have a significant number of seasonal employees, and we're very fortunate we're able to hire those through temp agencies. In hiring them through the temp agency, it relieves the city of a lot of liability and a lot of process. At the same time, we pay a premium anywhere from 31% to 35% for each dollar in wages that are paid. So for example, if a person is paid $10 an hour to work with Michael on the parks crews in mowing, we're actually paying that agency $13.10 to $13.50. That's still a good deal for the city. But it's surprising to realize 
that our total accounts with those agencies is over six hundred thousand dollars now we believe that by going in and negotiating with the two agencies we use that we should be able to get a better rate it doesn't mean they're going to agree it is certainly true the whole time we have the temporary employee that that agency has responsibilities but on the other hand if you have an employee who comes to work in the mowing crews in April and that person stays with you all the way through September should you actually pay that 35 percent surcharge every hour every day every week every pay period so one of the things that once we get the bond issues and uh, the budget uh, pretty much behind us we're pledging to you that we're going to meet with these agencies we're going to see if we can negotiate a better rate so that we can determine are we actually getting as good a bargain as we can with that buying power so the budget book itself is organized in the same fashion that we have organized each year I will use uh, if you will turn to any of the budget pages uh, well why don't we turn to the mayor and council's budget that begins on page 24 on page 23 rather you will see the mission of the mayor and council on the next page you will see the revenue and expenditure summaries on the next page you will see comments and staffing this gives you and the citizens the opportunity in one place to see major things having to do with that department now it's certainly true that in addition to what you see in these simplified line items there is a very thick almost what thousand page book that actually shows every component of every line item mm -hmm. we're pleased to tell you that mr. Thomas has accepted the responsibility <laughs> that the council asked him to do several years ago to Read review those. each of those items for Read you those. but I have a complaint because I ask I always ask Gail to reduce the budget so the last time she gave me one, I think it was like six point pica. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, you needed a microscope to read for. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't define reduce. So. Right. Right. But in addition to what you see here, we want you to understand, and you're welcome to have the opportunity to have your own personalized copy that will actually show you every line item, every subscription, every breathing apparatus, every patrol car anything that we're spending money on there is detailed backup that is available to you and if you're interested in it we'll be happy to to uh, print one of those documents for you also available for the public just out of curiosity uh, refresh my memory why we jumped in that uh, actual 15 for the insurance contracts and all why did it go up so significantly actually in your budget okay I tell you, in one second, let's, uh, we'll get right to the budgets if you would like to begin to, to discuss some of them. So uh, I know that uh, Ms. Washington has uh, another engagement. Uh, what we'd like to do, if you don't mind, in the next 45 minutes is begin to go through some of those. Is that acceptable to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's look at the mayor and council's budget. It begins on page 23, and 24 is the detail. First of all, the overhead allocation. I would remind council that while you sit as the mayor and council of the city you also sit as the board of directors of several of the enterprise funds actually any enterprise fund we have so you're the board of directors for the water and sewer fund the board of directors for the stormwater fund the board of directors for commercial garbage and residential garbage all of the funds you adopt the budgets for because of that it's appropriate for your budget and the budgets of many other departments to have cost sharing throughout those funds for example this year on water and sewer we project that you will be spending about 11 percent of your time on water and sewer issues I'm sorry that's the that's the change we are projecting that you will be spending a portion of your time on water and sewer 
So out of your total budget of roughly $478,000, you're going to be collecting roughly, what would that be, 18%, Mr. Thomas? Something like that uh, from the water and sewer fund. We'll say 18% yeah, for simple. That's close. We, won't, we won't ask for NC State mm -hmm. math. We'll use Clemson math. Right. And you can see the same thing. Solid waste, we feel like, fortunately, knock on wood, you're going to be spending very little time on solid waste this year. So out of your $478,000 budget, solid waste is only paying $33,000. Same thing with stormwater. When you get in your operating expenses, the, there is an increase that's nominal in insurance, contracts, training, fleet charges, and supplies. That is because of travel expenses. We have looked at travel expenses. We've asked you all to turn in the uh, projected trips that you'll be taking. So roughly we've increased that by about $2,000, an incidental expense. On the other hand, uh, when it comes to utility maintenance, professional services, IT, media charges, you'll notice that that has gone down just a little bit. And uh, it's primarily due to the allocation that is in the uh, intelligent or in the uh, ITS uh, department. Mayor, you asked for a specific question. What was that? Yeah, I was just looking at this uh, $35,000 increase, or almost $33,000 increase here between the actual FY15 and the adopted FY16 on that item two there. And you say that was from the travel? No. That was the line oh. number two in the expenditure. Yeah. You're talking about the you're talking about the was actual it an insurance problem or, or fifteen. Yeah, you're talking about the difference between the actual two thousand fifteen right. and the adopted two thousand sixteen. Right. What we'll do is go back and as always, uh, when you all ask questions and we don't have the answers, uh, if we can't make them up and make you believe them, then we'll do some research on them. So we will find out on just that one. I'm just curious. If Anybody have a, a memory on why that went up two years ago? From some 15 of it, to 16. Some of it's travel. Yeah. Uh, don't know how much was attributed to any of the other, other items in that. What about the $50,000 in the uh, next line, three? But that, that ends up being tied to allocation. In other words, okay. every year when we allocate the ITS budget and the media budget, and what happened, I think, uh, that that year, that's when we started broadcasting all the boards and commissions meetings. Mm -hmm. in which, and so what happened is there was a, those get charged to the mayor and council's account, and therefore that part of the media allocation increased in the mayor and the council's account. I think at the same time we were lost some that we were getting from the county. We were providing them some services. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, actually, Mr. Thomas, you are right. Uh, because the county started broadcasting their own meetings, such as the meeting last evening, uh, the contribution from the county went down. Okay. But we'll get you more detail on, on both of those. Barring anyone proposing a resolution tonight to move us from seven council members to a different number, we're assuming that your personnel number will remain at seven. I'm curious, are we, are we counted in the 55 uh, part-time employees that you showed us earlier? Well, actually, I don't know the answer to that. Let me turn back a page and see. Page 25. Page. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Okay. I was wondering if that was part of the 55 that you showed us earlier. Well, if you'll turn to page 19 of your budget book, we don't actually show y'all, so when it shows the, that, that must be an oversight on our part, but we don't show y'all as part of the full-time employees, nor seasonal, nor part-time. I would tell you that um, knowing the <laughs> demands on your job, you should be in the full-time category. <laughs> but to keep the budget at 556, we ask you not to make that adjustment. <laughs> we could just call ourselves like temp employees. <laughs> <laughs> on, yeah, on-call employees. On-call employees. <laughs> Elections, obviously we have no expense for elections, but we would remind you that a year from now when we sit and talk about budgets, we'll be once again looking at a thirty-eight to $40,000 addition to your 
to your budget uh, in order to have the um, biannual uh, elections. From a legal standpoint, once again, the attorney fills out a form each year that allocates his services to the various funds. You can see that uh, the revenue is um, a little down from the general fund this year, but a little up in some of the other items. His overall budget, though, is down. And that is noted in budget uh, notes on page 33 that the outside attorney fees and utility maintenance and so forth has decreased, resulting in a reduction of about $15,000 in his budget. I will also say to you, and I mean this in a very, very professional way, John is not just the city attorney. He is an advisor to the management. He is an advisor to every department. His advice is not just legal advice, it's what we call just professional advice. <clears throat> Whether we're talking about issues having to do with a potential lawsuit, UDO changes, bond issues, or whether we're simply talking about how we should organize the volunteer dinner where you're going to be recognizing tomorrow night your volunteer advisory boards. His counsel is critical. And I will also say to you, uh, and I'm, I'm tooting his horn, and it should be, even after UNC lost last night, his trombone should be long and extended in that he is a valued, you get a lot of return for the one uh, uh, counselor that you hire. And I appreciate your professional you. assistance every day. With that, John's going to go through my budget for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the city manager's budget, we do the same thing on page 36. We do the same thing with cost allocations. You will notice that, uh, that the uh, insurance and contracts have gone up a little bit that utility maintenance and so forth have gone up, but all of those are going to be reflected through practically every department. You're going to see IT charges and media charges raising or lowering almost every budget. Now, it doesn't hit every budget the same. Why is that? The number of devices that you have assigned to your department determine the number of IT charges, let's say, or units that you get charged for. So if the police department adds more gadgets, but they don't add any more people, then you're going to see, as you will later today or later in the process, that their budget went up over $200,000 just on gadgets. And that didn't have anything to do with body cams. It just has to do with gadgets we put in that building. On the other hand, when we get iPads or when we get <laughs> cell phones, those charges are directly reflected. So whatever you as a department head are requesting, that comes back to your budget. One of the things that we did this year as part of the three E's was to look at all the phones that we use. And we said, why does this person need that phone? In many cases, a lot of our phones that are out there, the only reason why they need it is to dial numbers. It isn't about texting. It isn't about receiving emails. It's just the lawnmower has broken down and Michael needs to be called, so they need to be able to punch in those seven digits. They don't need expensive phones. So by studying that this year, we reduced the number of phones that had a lot of abilities and went back to the basic flip phone. And that has worked very well. That is an area, though, that we always have to watch on what we would call creep. Well, Joe got that phone. Why can't I have that phone? Or I saw this on TV. Why can't I now have the one that's on TV? So that is constantly something that we try to monitor. The number of personnel in the um, city manager's uh, budget stays constant. We are very pleased to tell you that uh, we now have a new full-time receptionist. She is charged to our, uh, the manager's budget, Yolanda, who has been a part-time employee with us on and off for the last year, uh, competed successfully. 
and she is now the receptionist so that when you see her in the atrium, the foyer, uh, she is now with us on a full-time basis. Happy to hear that. Yep. Very, very nice young lady. Any? Woodruff, yes, I had a question. Back on number 36 for expenditures, where under capital improvement projects with the Frida Fountain, are we still accepting pledges for that? Or? Yes, ma'am. We certainly oh, okay. are. And uh, we, are, we are very pleased to tell you that almost every month we sell about $1,000 worth of bricks. Okay. And so, so uh, will they be installed at a specific time? As no, a they're, they're actually installed when the person orders them. It takes oh, about okay. a month to get them in. Okay. Then we contact that person and we have a little ceremony out there. We actually uh, go out to the fountain with the person. They identify where they would like the, uh, the brick to be placed. Mm -hmm. Some people may, connect, may be more connected with one military service than the other. Some want to be closer to the medallions or closer to the fountains. We let the person who's buying the brick identify where they want it, and then we hold a little ceremony and install them. So almost once a month, we have a little ceremony out there installing those. Okay. And we, we certainly are pleased that, uh, that the fountain is being used so well. On passports, We are always, this is our second year of being in the passport application business. And I want the public to understand, we do not issue passports. We are the application agency. That means you can call City Hall and set up an appointment, or you can come into City Hall or come into the Center for Public Safety five days a week and get an application processed. There is a charge for that. The federal government sets the charge that the city can apply. That's $25. Additionally, we charge for the taking of pictures, the passport pictures. For good pictures, the charge <coughs> is $8. For just regular pictures, the charge is still $8. But we do that. Uh, you will remember that when we finished the audit of the first year, we actually had revenue of over $80,000. We project that's going to continue, but because it is a revenue source that we have very little control over, it's basically walk-in traffic, we are budgeting conservatively here, so you can see we're only projecting about $63,000 in revenue. The expenditures are only 4000 roughly $4,000, because remember, the way that we cover the service is through existing employees. We did not hire a single new employee to do this. And last year we processed, I believe it was close to 3,000 applications using the 11 agents that we have. So again, now, Gail, you can explain why the negative number of 59,000, that's because you're transferring money out. What? Yeah, that's the excess of the revenue over the expenditures. And all of that goes into the general fund? That's correct. Okay. Good. <clears throat> and of course, staffing is actually shown as zero. Transportation planning. Uh, Ron, can you help us? Anthony is out of town on city business tonight, so can you walk us through uh, some of these things on transportation planning? Yeah, the, the first uh, area is the MPO's budget, in essence, and any of the support that the MPO uh, provides to the city. Like, for example, in there, one of the revenue sources is traffic impact analysis fees. And, and that's just a planning number, but that's when a development has to conduct a TIA. Uh, they basically, we give them the opportunity to get the contract from the city and reimburse the city the cost of that. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but the, the, the most of their workload is determined by the MPO and the MPO's approved work plan, the tax approved work plan. And you can see that the, we, we, of course, the city contributes some funding, funding from the general fund. That's in the first line item. It's $124,000. That's part of the match for all the federal funding. The county contributes to that match, fifteen five. We have a number of grants. The 104, uh, 104 grant is the actual uh, Federal Highway Administration Transportation Planning Grant. 
the 5303 is a is an FTA planning grant. That's and the Federal, Trans Trans Federal, Federal, Federal Transit Administration. And in actuality, one of those is 5307 and one of them is 5303, I think. But, uh, but anyhow, there's, there's two FTA grants in there that, uh, that provide funding. I think yeah. one of them is the state part of the grant. Okay. No, you're right. You're correct. That's now, right. One of the things that we would point out, why is the county match so much lower than the city match? It's because the MPO does not cover the entire county. The MPO covers all of the city and basically the urbanized area of the county. Is that the way to say it? That, that's correct. And some of the, the city's contribution includes match the required match for the FTA funding, which the county doesn't didn't contribute to so it's a combination of why we're we're matching but uh, it, if we if we really get into some some studies for example are primarily in the county we go talk to the county about increasing their contribution uh, you know, because it's really an 80 20 match for that transportation planning planning money 80 percent federal and 20 percent local and that the the, um, the salaries and, and, uh, and benefits, uh, you know, no no significant increase. Uh, some equipment uh, purchase that we've got budgeted in there. And then when you look at the traffic signals, which are all part of this, yeah, and the and the traffic signals. Um, we have general fund funding and we have NCDOT Schedule C and Schedule D funding and that's because we maintain, we do annual maintenance on the DOT signals and uh, the, the Schedule D pertains to the actual transportation ma or traffic management. That's the salary that, that pay, that's the money that pays Rob's salary. It helps us time the signals and keep the traffic uh, flowing at, at the optimum levels. Now, if you'll if you'll look on the screen and also look in your book at page 48, <coughs> you'll notice taxes and other general fund revenue. In FY16 amended, it was 501,000. In the proposed budget, it's 672,000. If you were if you're looking at the paper book or the overall budget. Look at the adopted FY16, 288000 So the first question that comes up is, why has this line item in traffic signal control gone from 288000 to 501000 to 672000 The answer is, we've transferred where we pay for our street lights, not traffic lights, street lights, and who is responsible for getting those street lights repaired and inventory? For a long time, it was in Johnny's area in the streets department. That is now, now that we are into traffic signals, it became logical for our people to also work with the utility companies on street lights. So the real thing is to look at FY16, 288,000, you basically added $400,000 to this budget, but you will see in the streets budget a reduction of $400,000 because we're simply moving the responsibility for managing street lights to a different department. Just recently, Ms. Washington had a number of lights that kept going on and off on Commerce, and we were able to work with uh, Jones Onslow, was that Ms. Washington? Was that Jones Onslow? Mm -hmm. to, to get those working. We also know that in both Duke Power and Jones Onslow are changing their technology over to the LEDs. And with that, we are seeing some savings in our streetlight accounts. But we want to remind you and the public over a penny of your tax bill, of your tax rate, goes to streetlights. And I will say to you, we're not that well lit a city. I mean, we don't have lights all up and down Western Boulevard and 
a lot of these other places that some of the some of the more urbanized areas have but you're still spending over four hundred thousand dollars a year on street lights and, and one of the things <clears throat> that we have done and it says there in the note <clears throat> on uh, the, the page number 49 about our expertise we're developing our ability to to splice fiber optic cable so what that does is <clears throat> that of course helps us with the with the connectivity for the signal system but it also helps us with our own network connectivity with the city and just within the past month for example there was a, a cut on the fiber that's at piney green the cut was made by the contractor working on the project it's his cable that he's responsible for but because we have the ability to do that they basically hired us to patch their cable damage we also had uh, a, a cut on a on a fiber that we run from the tower at the commons to the water plant and uh, and our people were able to to go and, and patch that and when we've hired commercially it's usually costs around five thousand bucks to repair one of those fiber cuts so that's that in the future that's going to be a way to earn some revenue to offset some of the expense for having you know the, the signal staff and their equipment to do things like that and then of course transit uh, we do put in about four hundred thousand dollars this coming year for transit that is the general funds contribution you can see that the fares have stayed stable it has been some time since we raised the rate ridership has gone from about ninety thousand in 2012 to one hundred and ten thousand in 2015 uh, obviously we have not seen the ridership count for this year because we're still in 2016. we we expect it to continue to rise uh, we're still working on adding a fourth route which should also you know add to our ridership because it'll serve an area of the city that currently doesn't have a uh, bus transportation and that's down in the georgetown area and, and out to the walmart on the south end of town uh, one of the things that was approved in in the uh, consent budget tonight or the consent agenda was dot has now with the the uh, implementation of the STI <clears throat> they have now implement implemented procedures for DOT to start providing match for replacement buses so one of the agenda items in the consent was for council to approve us applying for that type of funding so if in fact we're successful whenever we budgeted replacement buses up to 10 percent of the cost of that replacement bus will be provided by dot instead of right now where we're budgeting it from the general fund so uh, we, we continue to manage that and in and, and of course our, our total contribution each year is tied to whatever congress appropriates in the funding from the fta and that's tied to ridership too so it's a it's a thing that continually is adjusted based on the formulas. Talk about the increase in grants from roughly a million to 1.9 <coughs> million for the coming year, please. We're 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 actually uh, we have the opportunity sometimes to receive additional funding uh, from the state uh, that they they get to manage and um, and so uh, depending on a project like it's primarily a capital project we will then basically try to uh, obtain some of the funding from the from the state but Richard which line are you looking at specifically well, talk about transit comment number three on page 54 okay see there what what Anthony's referring to is that that there are funds uh, like for example that the, that the, the state controls 
that are federal funds uh, that haven't been utilized. And, and what you can do is, is, is they have a timeline on spending those federal funds and at a certain point, they'll make them available to authorize projects in other transit systems. So we will try and, one, use all of our unused funding and, and that we may have in our grants and then apply for some of that unused funding that the state is managing. And that's what we, we hope to be able to do, to be able to cover the cost of the park and ride. And that's what we talked before about using the local uh, value of the land for the local match. And you recall in the tour of a couple of weeks ago, we went up by the commons and there across from Lake Bittner, between Lake Bittner and the ball fields, there's that wooded area. And that's where we're proposing to build a new parking lot that would be a park and ride lot. And as Ron said, uh, the, that will be covered by the price, the value of the land will be the city's match, and the federal uh, authorities, transit authorities, will be paying for that development. That will be something that we will be bringing you some designs to see probably late summer, because we hope to get that under contract or out for bid sometime during the coming fiscal year. Maybe, maybe, a, little, yeah, maybe a little later than summer. So we'll summer may include October or November, is that what you're saying? Right? Yeah. We may have a late summer this year. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> a little, little warming in. It could be. Yeah. It could be. On community programs, you will, you will notice that the the taxes and general fund have gone down. And why is that? Later in the budget, you are going to see a new division that we have talked with you about, and that is the Office of Livable Neighborhoods. So what's happened in community programs is historically this had two employees in it. Now this has one employee in it, and the other employee is over in the new division of livable neighborhoods. So you will see across the board some reductions in their overall uh, cost. This is the area, though, where we have, um, you know, the the work that Glenn and a lot of his folks do, even though his folks are in their own media uh, budget. And you can see the reduction on staff from two to one. Uh, tourism, uh, while you're not the TDA, you are required to adopt a budget because we actually manage the funds for TDA. On page uh, 60, you'll notice that the occupancy tax, we're still projecting to be about 900,000. We don't see that growing. You will also notice that uh, there is an administrati administration charge. Now by law, the city can collect an administrative charge, but that's all that can come to the city government. Uh, John, can you or Gail, talk about what's the percent or how you figure that administrative charge? It's right at $19,000 that the city budgets to receive from that. Um, it's a higher percentage for the first 500000 and then Graduate. a lower percentage. I can't remember off the top of my head what the percentages are. But um, the rest of that is for things like the audit and um, the insurance. Yeah, insurance and bonds for the board. And. and then you'll notice that the operating expenses are broken into tourism promotion and other tourism-led expenses. Remind you that the state law identifies a basically two-thirds, one-third split, saying that two-thirds of the money has to go to promotions or marketing, and one-third has to go or can go, doesn't have to go, but can go to capital projects, physical things. On human resources, page 64, you will notice that the, the budget is generally flat. There are some uh, minor increases relative to uh, video and professional services and utilities and so forth. 
there is a department issue that we're going to be talking with you about, not tonight, but at the end of the budget, and that is the wellness program that uh, they would like to add about $42,000 to hire a, not as a city employee, but a new contract with, uh, with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield for a coaching program. And we'll be discussing the pros and cons of that with you uh, at a later date. Overall, though, this department uh, budget, as you see, is, is almost the same as last year. Personnel are still the same. The city clerk's budget, uh, we're very proud of the fact that Carmen was recognized yesterday by her peers. The mayor and, and Mr. Warden and Mr. Bittner were able to come. The rest of you had conflicts, but we had a nice tree planting ceremony out behind City Hall where her fellow clerks recognized her as the clerk of the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe uh, that was some type of plum tree. Do you remember the actual name? Yeah. Crimson Point Plum. Crimson Point, Point Plum. Plum. Is that right, Michael? Uh, Michael. He's left. Okay. Yeah. Crimson Point Plum. Uh, that tree was originally grown in Alabama by uh, apparently Crimson Tide fans, and that's why it's called the Crimson Plum. Okay. Makes for a good story. Yes. One of the things in Carmen's budget, though, that we did include under note number two increase by $10,000 for office assistance to help with the new record management project in the department. Uh, will you spend a moment talking about that records management program? Well, we've been wanting to work on a citywide records management policy for some time with an emphasis on electronic records. Um, we uh, are going to be having a laser fish upgrade soon, which will help us um, with uh, disposition of records that are no longer needed, electronic records um, to free up storage. Um, but employees need guidance on how to dispose of records and how to manage their records. So it's something we wanted to, wanted to try to put together to help manage all kinds of records, but mainly electronic records, which includes emails and videos and texts and social media and just about any anything you do on computers and phones and iPads and all these type things. So. Um, this would be some help for us to try to accomplish that this year. The other thing we need to do on our records management is eliminate. I sent out a, an email today to the mayor and council relative to the issue we're dealing with with the repayment to the DOT regarding um, the traffic signal system. That went to the seven of you. It had copies to three or four other people. So right now, unless you've deleted it, there are 10 emails being stored in the city system. And actually, there's an 11th. Because if all 10 of us delete it, it's still stored somewhere. And guess what? That thing is going to stay stored for a long time. Not because the law requires it but because no one is going into our systems and saying delete that because it's past the, the required keep date. The more stuff we store, the more expensive IT becomes. And part of this goal is to go into our systems and truly look at the paper documents we have but more important from a finance standpoint, all of the electronic things that we are keeping that we have no need to keep. Well, I would certainly like to know what we're required as far as electronic storage is concerned with our emails. I mean, I have emails that are, go back all the way to 2005. That yeah. Do I have an obligation to keep them because they are public record? I, I don't know. Nope. Well, what we will do, uh, one of the things that, that we plan to do is to bring you a workshop to show you and then all of the city employees what you're required to keep, how long you're required to keep it, how you go about the process of eliminating it. So we will give you that information. But, Mayor, I'm, I'm no different than you. I can show you emails that go back to the first day that I was here. And that email from Mr. Thomas that said, I want budget details, <laughs> I still have that one. 
I'll resend it for you. Okay. <laughs> I know at the college at the college we get uh, we get little notifications from our IT people to uh, lighten up our boxes a little bit, you know, because we get so many emails stored in them, you know. And I guess that just takes up so much room on the server and everything. So, I mean, I, I've never seen nothing from our IT department. That's the reason why we need to start managing. Okay. Right. Uh, Mayor and, and Council, in honor of uh, Ms. Washington, the fact she's going to have to leave for another obligation, uh, this comes to a point where we could stop for the evening and pick back up in a week. On the other hand, if the other four of you want to make, want to wade through the entire budget tonight, we're welcome to stay here until 10 o'clock. But that's... That's up to you. If you'd like to adjourn for the evening, that's a good breaking point. If you'd like to cover one or two more, that's up to you. Motion to adjourn. That's up to you. <laughs> We've been here for an hour and 11 minutes. I mean, I'll, I'll leave it up to the rest of the council. Ms. Washington, do you have a preference? Do you mind if they cover a few more budgets tonight? or? And if that's acceptable to you, we'll, we'll merge on. Forge on, not merge on. Forge on. Finance Department. Once again, overhead allocations are shown on page 72. You will notice the $19,000 that they recover from tourism fees. You will also notice $4,000 for business licenses. Now, you might say, I thought we did away with privilege licenses, so why do we have biz why do we have business licenses? So the answer is, Gail? There are a few that didn't get um, repealed. Uh, there's a beer and wine license that we still collect, um, very minimal, but we still do get one or two that we classify as business licenses. Yes. Club pays pays y'all thirty bucks <coughs> for the National Country Club. I saw that. We and we appreciate that <laughs> that donation each year. Of course, we pay the uh, state ABC board about twenty two hundred dollars so, for our license. Now, does that help the golfers with their games? Yeah, well, it, yes. Uh, in the telling afterwards, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so it may be worth the twenty two hundred dollars you pay the state. Okay. So how do we get money for credit reports? Here? We charge the um, new customers a minimal fee. I don't remember what it is. But. That, that's if they don't want. They'd rather have a credit report rather than deposit. Pay the deposit. deposit. Yes. So it's their choice. You know, pay a deposit or pay us to get your credit check. It's three dollars and fifty cents. But then we have to pay that to somebody else to get. The well, yes, we pay the the company. Can, can we can we get a credit report for three dollars and fifty cents? You can get one for free, right? At Credit Karma. Let's see. Yeah. So are we are we going to implement that process? No, you can get your own. I cannot get yours. <laughs> I assume we're we're at least breaking even on that. I, I would assume so. Yes. We well, just remember, assuming can get us both in trouble. Yeah, I can check yeah, to be sure. That's what I was wondering there. We, we will check on that and see. Uh, when you look at the uh, number of employees that are in this area, this includes all of your billing folks uh, downstairs in the utility area. It also includes all of the upstairs staff in, in finance. Uh, we talked about the credit, but let's look at credit at uh, budget note number five on page 73. We have done a very good job of marketing electronic payments. Uh, electronic payments are not free. Now, over-the-counter is not free. So you have to balance how many employees do you actually need to take people who are walking through the door versus what are you willing to pay for electronic fees. You will notice in FY15, the city processed a total of 87,606 credit card transactions totaling over $9 million. In FY16, the city processed an estimated 93,000, total of almost 9.9 .9 million. But there are fees that we pay for those credit card charges. 
we do not recover that fee by any type of a surcharge on the bill. So while it does cost us, there is a savings in that if all 16 or 17 thousand accounts walk through the door every month, or we had to uh, collect it some other way than electronically, uh, we would need a lot more personnel. So there is always that balance. But we just want to remind people that when you pay by credit card, uh, it's a great way to pay. We want to encourage that. The city does pay a fee for that collection service. Where is the expenditure for fees uh, on that, Gail? Um, Probably under number two, contracts. I think it's number three. Number three, professional yeah. services, do you think? I believe that's where it is. We'll verify that for you. And, and I'd be just curious to know what is what our, what our processing fees Total. Just one the total. Well, it's a straight percentage of sales, right? Or no, it depends a upon the card. combination of methods that uh, they charge uh, debit, through. Yeah, Every one of them is a little different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But bank draft is no, that doesn't cost us anything, right? If you do a direct bank draft, yeah, that's, that's correct. That's neutral. That's the best. <clears throat> metering of course this is covered completely by your water and sewer revenues because this is how we build water and sewer customers uh, we continue to have efficiencies in this area we have uh, five persons who uh, work directly under Sabrina Adams and they do I think an excellent job uh, anytime a person uh, is questioning in their bill we go right back out and reread it they're very timely in this uh, we did some studies two years ago about privatizing this you'll remember that the private company could not even begin to touch how inexpensively our personnel were doing this and I think that again that's credit to Gail and to Sabrina and to the five employees that are down there but the increase in non-capital equipment is due to that uh, replacement of the desktop computer that was the one we talked about earlier where they had a decision package they wanted to have uh, a backup piece of equipment and so uh, that was added to their budget and that was relatively inexpensive uh, fleet maintenance is the last of the departments that's under the finance department uh, it is a fund that is based upon how many pieces of equipment and how many times does it need to be repaired. You'll notice in the comments that there are 581 vehicles or pieces of equipment in the fleet. We have 11 personnel. We added one person when we expanded to residential, I'm sorry, expanded to commercial garbage. We've already talked about the fuel cost. Uh, the capital outlay expenditure is higher due to replacement of a 16-year-old brake lathe on the automotive side of the shop and a much-needed fuel system upgrade. Uh, Ed, if you would, come back up and talk about the fuel system upgrade that we have put in the budget. Yes, sir. Um, the current system we have is what's considered a vacuum type system. All our fuel dispensers have vac individual vacuum pumps and it's drawing the fuel from 250 yards away. Uh, that system was meant for a tank a lot closer. It's 14 years old now, so it's getting, um, there's a lot of maintenance going on. Uh, I've had one pump down for almost two weeks to trying to get it back up again. I haven't had all four of them up very often. Uh, what we what we plan on doing is uh, moving it to um, a pump type system, submersible pumps at the tank, uh, four of them, two on the unleaded, two on the diesel, and replacing the the old digital type or the old uh, mechanical dispensers with dual electronic dispensers. Uh, the software and all the key card reader, that's all going to remain the same. So may, mainly it's a hardware upgrade. The dispensers are going to be upgraded. The electric pumps, 
the biggest cost in all that is running electrical. There is no power at the tanks. So the power has to be run from the building through the island and then to the tanks to operate the, the new electric submersible pumps. What's the total estimated cost of the, uh, of the system we're installing? $64,000. And Gail, are we funding that in one year or spreading it out over years? We're financing that. We're financing it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Ed, anything else you want to point out in your budget? No, sir. Other than that, that big expense, that's, that's the main part of our budget. And, and I guess where, did we ever come to a closure on uh, deciding to, to put an auxiliary fueling station out on the other side of town so that everybody doesn't have to come back just to fuel or anything? Well, we, we have not. That that talk's kind of stuck. But this upgrade of our system is kind of leading us in that. Right now, we have to do manual stick readings. We have to manually read the pump, go to the pumps and read it. With these new electronic ones, we will be able to do that all from the office, which will give us a good chance to set up how it's done. So if you want to put one on the other side of town, you can still control everything from one location. Right now, if it was another one on the side of town, somebody would have to physically go over there, do stick readings of all the tanks, uh, do write down the, the totalizer readings. If we can get this new system employed here and see how it works, then I think upgrading will be a lot easier. You can do everything from the office without manually going over there. Physically going on. Ron, you wanted to add something? Yeah, on that? well, I just want to say it's it's still a project, but it hasn't moved forward in the CIP, so it's sort of on hold at this point. Yeah, there there, we looked at the number of units that are on that side of town, <clears throat> and obviously Parks and Recreation is the primary unit, and Station Four is the is the other primary unit. Uh, when we looked at the cost of installing that versus the number of vehicles that would uh, that would be available, that sounds like the uh, Villanova fight song. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, when we looked at that, uh, we initially contacted a filling station, service station that's over on that side, to set up a uh, a temporary account for fueling. Uh, that didn't work out because of the number of pieces of equipment we have that have trailers and the difficulty of getting in and out at that station. Uh, the other thing that we're currently studying in Michael's department is converting our mowers, which requires you know a lot of gas every day, to natural gas. So it's not something we're going to give up on, but I think right now the best thing for us to do is just continue to monitor when will it become economically advantageous for us to uh, to do that now police cars are all over town and anytime they are on the western area and they have to come all the way back to the, the main uh, garage that certainly is downtime for them but we that is still in the CIP run it's still a project but it's we we have it further back in the CIP okay. uh, general fund non-departmental If you'll notice under fees, this is where we account for the $150,000 that the TDA gives relative to the debt service on the Sturgeon City money. You'll also notice the $75,000 bond donation from the Sturgeon City Board of Directors. This is where it is accounted in your system. If you'll notice under expenditures, there are salaries with a negative number behind them. In your department budgets, we assume that every employee, every position that you've approved, that every employee is going to work 2,080 hours or whatever their full work year is. The reality is that doesn't happen in every department. While in a department such as the attorney, it does happen. But in police, with a turnover rate that they have, or in public works, because you have turnover, you have salary savings. This is where that salary savings is theoretically, and from an accounting standpoint, pulled back out 
and therefore the negative number. And you can see that over the years we've budgeted somewhere around three hundred and fifty to three hundred and eighty thousand dollars of negative salaries, recapturing those. And this is just the general fund departments. This is not water and sewer or anything stormwater. These are just the the general fund numbers. Gail, you want to cover any of these other items in non-departmental? The capital reserve, what was that? <clears throat> That's the, um, primarily the four cent money going out to going spend out on the projects or yeah. to pay debt service. Gotcha. So that in this line up above? Hmm? The revenue, the debt service revenue in there? Well, no, because the revenue actually comes from general fund into the capital reserve. Now, one item that um, that is also here, if you'll notice in the budget notes, is the 800 megahertz system. And this is one of those uh, heads up, the train's coming moments. When the county... Uh, established the bond issue and I believe it was run 13 or 14 million dollars for the system total total that, yeah that our our part of it was like about three million left them about 10 million yeah uh, the debt was set up where we're only paying interest for a while you know there comes a point where you got to start paying down the principal and uh, I, I apologize for not checking we will check there comes a point in the next several years where we're going to have to start paying principal and interest on that. So your your payment is going to go up substantially on that 800 megahertz system. And when that happens, uh, our number is going to go up. Did you have a chance to check today to see? I did not. Okay. We'll get you more information on the 800 megahertz system, what we're currently paying on interest, and when we're going to have to start paying principal and interest. Richard, that's it. It's uh, number two on 60, 86. It's physical year 20s when you say the principal. Okay, and thank you. <clears throat> okay. Why is it is that non dark departmental? <clears throat> oh, <pardon. clears throat> Police, right? Public safety. Police and fire. Okay. Why Good question. You, why don't you account for it <laughs> just because? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Seemed like a good good idea at the time. Okay. Not there. Okay. We don't have any control over that. That's, that just that was that by decision. the county, and we're just re we 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 send them a check every every year or monthly, however we however it's set up. Yes. Yeah, we. We agreed that the payment would be tied to their financing, and the, the way they chose to finance it was, you know, pushing back. But the county and the city it. will face a substantial increase in FY20 when that's, we start paying. That's, that's, that's interesting, you know, just pushing, off, pushing it out a little further. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it's not going to hit us too bad. I mean, we're only talking three million. But if you're talking, is that correct? Three million? Is that a correct number? Generally, give or take the number. Yes. And, that, and it's twenty million total. So about thirteen. Thirteen. So ten million for their side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mayor, if it's acceptable, uh, uh, Mike Inera asked if he could be here for his uh, police budget. So if y'all are comfortable, we'll close for the evening and pick back up next week. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh,